What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Schaefer Stock Market Podcast. This is Josh Selway talking to you. I am an editor at Schaefer's Investment Research. We do these podcasts once per week, every single week, bringing you quick updates on the stock market and financial news, whatever we're looking at over at Schaefer'sResearch.com and beyond. So let's get started this week. Wow, we had a lot happen this week, and we're going to start with Monday's trading because it was a historic sell-off in the stock market. So we had all the drama on the trade front. Once again, this continues to escalate. Uh, we had uh, the U.S. label China a currency manipulator. We had uh, fears of a currency war on top of this trade war. We had China coming in and halting crop imports from the U.S., putting more pressure on U.S. farmers. Uh, all of this unfolding just today. President Trump said he's no, in no rush to make a deal with China, blocking business to Huawei, once again, the Chinese tech giant. So uh, still not looking good on the trade front. Very volatile week in the stock market. We had the volatility index, the VIX, uh, seen as the fear gauge across Wall Street. That was making huge, huge moves earlier in the week. So uh, we continue to monitor all that on the trade front. Very unpredictable, causing huge swings in the market. And on Monday, you saw a almost 770 point decline in the Dow Jones industrial average and similar losses for the S&P and NASDAQ. And as all this has been happening, we've had gold prices rise sharply. They're trading near four-year highs. And this comes as billionaire hedge fund manager Ray Dalio just came out recently with a big call suggesting that equities cannot perform well uh, in the in the short term in the coming years and that traders should consider picking up gold as a way to hedge against this underperformance in stocks. So gold seeing a lot of interest lately and that is showing increased demand has led to higher prices for gold in recent weeks. So another interesting development here as the trade tensions tick up between the U.S. and China is this increase in activity on the iShares Taiwan Index, ticker EWT. Uh, options trading activity has picked up in recent weeks. We have uh, the U.S. and Taiwan here uh, coming together for an official exchange, as China put it, which China is against. And uh, we have the uh, Taiwan's leader, pro-independence leader, is coming to the U.S. this week. Actually, it's supposed to, she's supposed to be here uh, today. I'm recording this on Friday, August 9th. So that is just another area of contention there between the U.S. and China. So as those... Uh, those tensions continue to increase here. We have options traders rolling in on EWT, and uh, we wrote about this over on the website at SchaeferSresearch.com. We had what looks like a long strangle options play here. If you're not familiar with that, uh, we have an education section over on the website that'll help explain all that. But essentially, what we have here is a trader trying to bet on a big move in either direction. And the break-even for this trade, you, again, you can find all the details in the article. But break-even for this trade would be a move above 37.68 or move below 31.32. So this was a pretty big uh, advanced options trade here on EWT, trying to uh, get a different type of play here on the U.S.-China trade relations, it would seem like. That's what uh, is so interesting to me. I, I like trying to find these areas that different traders are trying to exploit to get uh, exposure in different ways to these ongoing storylines in the market. So this one definitely stood out as an interesting trade here uh, on the options front. Now, speaking of interesting options trades, we noted this one today. So one of the biggest losers today is ViewRay, ticker V-R-A-Y. And this is a company that makes uh, scanners for the healthcare industry. They specialize in these advanced uh, new age MRI machines for radiation therapy. But that stock is getting destroyed today. It was last seen uh, trading down like 60%. It cut its full year uh, sales guidance and reported a steeper than expected loss for the quarter. So uh, the stock was trading at uh, a little over $6 at yesterday's close. And what was interesting when I was looking at this stock, there was actually, uh, it seemed like some insider selling uh, the days before the uh, earnings release where it looks like some executives were dumping shares. Uh, seemingly seeing the writing on the wall here, uh, they knew a bad quarter was coming 
and uh, the stock's getting destroyed as a result. And not only that, because the, the shares are actually trading up around over nine dollars, uh, not too long ago in recent weeks. And now all the way down at three dollars today. So a huge sell off there. But just before the company reported earnings on Thursday after the close, right before a bell, the bell, uh, we had a put trade come through where. Uh, traders were targeting the August 6th put. There was one trade of 10,000 contracts there that crossed for 30 cents each. So if you do the math, that adds up to a price of $300,000 for this trade. And today, those puts are being bid at $295 each. So that position would now be worth almost $3 million. So a huge winning trade there uh, where uh, this trader is staring on a profit of almost 900%, around 880% at the time of our write-up. So clearly, you want to give this trader credit for this type of move, but it also uh, would suggest that this is somebody that seemingly knew something going into the earnings event, the timing of the move, the size of the move. Uh, definitely suspicious there, and if we're going to be honest, we see these types of things a lot at Schaefer's where a stock will make a big move like this. If you look at re recent options activity, a lot of times there's a trade like this that looks very suspicious, but hey, what can you do? You just kind of have to report it and say uh, touche to those people, uh, I guess. Okay, another stock that made a big move this week and has been one of the biggest winners of 2019, the shares have roughly doubled year to date, is Match Group. That is the online dating services provider and the owner of Tinder. Match Group, as I said, a huge year on the charts, roughly doubling in value, and the company just reported another strong quarter, uh, topping analysts' expectations. This is ticker MTCH. And the company noted that a lot of these, uh, a lot of its strength for the quarter in recent quarters has come from Tinder as Tinder con continues to grow. If you're not familiar with Tinder, I'm sure someone you know uses it. I know a lot of my uh, single friends have always uh, talked about Tinder. And you can tell just from talking to people, it's very popular. A uh, site to, to get people together, help people meet each other. And in the digital age, that is obviously a very popular thing. And it's driving the growth here for Match Group. And this isn't just a new thing. The stock has been strong in recent years. If you pull up a long-term chart of Match Group, you can tell that the, the company has been performing well and that is continuing into 2019 as the shares trade near record highs. And this was a big move here uh, for Schaefer subscribers, traders that were subscribed to our weekend trader alert services. We had uh, positions at the December 70 call option for Match, match Group and traders were able to more than double their money uh, in short time span there. Uh, again, we had the 70 call in the December series. Right now, that stock's all the way up at $84, and it was trading above $90 recently. It's given back some of those gains, but subscribers are still able to score a more than 100% profit with those match group call options that we recommended back on July 14th. So looking about about even less than a month there on that trade, and traders were able to double their money. That's exactly the type of stock that we like to look at for these trading services, these stocks that uh, have been having upward momentum if it's a call option. And Match Group is still surrounded by a lot of pessimism, which we like to see as contrarian traders. Lots of short interest and bearish analysts. So that trade worked out perfectly. And you can find more of our trading services over on the website. Uh, there's a tab for it at the top of SchaeferSresearch.com. And another huge winner, and this is one I've mentioned several times on the podcast. It's one of our favorite stocks here just from the sense that it's always making big moves and it, it's a popular company. It's a young company and that is Roku, ticker ROKU. I'm always talking about it hitting record highs and it did just again this week. The stock has surged in 2019. The, the shares made like a 20% move after earnings this week. The company continues to do well as more people move to streaming television. Roku uses ads uh, compared to some of these other services that are pay to watch. It's, it's certainly working here. Another strong quarter more bullish analyst attention, more buy ratings coming through for Roku. So this stock has a lot of momentum behind it and it continues to trade at record highs. Year to date, this stock is up over 300%. So congratulations to all those who have been bullish on Roku 
for the long term. Another one of our favorites here at Schaefer's Research is Advanced Micro Devices, ticker AMD. It is a great stock to follow if you are an options trader. Always interesting activity on AMD stock. But this week, the shares spiked. They made a 14% move on Thursday thanks to news that the company's new processor chips we featured in Alphabet, the Google parent, and Twitter's data centers. This resulted in increased call trading on AMD. In the last 10 days, we noted that there were almost 250,000 long calls traded for just 120,000 puts. So clearly call traders have had the advantage there. We had some weekly call trading as traders try to play the upward momentum there in AMD. But all this comes as uh, the chip sector continues to be one of the main focal points during the trade war. Obviously, semiconductor stocks are prone to big moves. They have been in the past year. Uh, I think like NVIDIA, who has also seen a lot of attention for its data center business as well. But uh, those companies are especially in focus with the China trade tensions. NVIDIA, for example, has a lot of revenue exposure to China. So these stocks have been in focus in recent weeks during uh, during this, this upflaring of trade tensions. So that's why that's just what made this move from AMD stock that much more notable. And a quick update on marijuana stocks before we go. We might get back into the weed stock talk next week. It's everyone's favorite topic. But uh, this week we just covered a couple things in the marijuana sector. First off, uh, Canopy Growth, ticker CGC, just announced that it's buying uh, Beckley Canopy Therapeutics, which is a biopharmaceutical company uh, in the UK. Uh, this is meant to develop weed-based wellness products uh, and give Canopy more of a foothold in Europe as well. Uh, the stock actually dipped lower on this news, but Canopy has been an interesting name to follow as marijuana stocks continue to grow in popularity. And the other name we are looking at here was Kronos Group, ticker CR. Oh, and another name that's been uh, talked about a lot and we've written about quite a bit over at SchaeferSresearch.com. The company just posted a surprise quarterly profit for the second quarter and revenue beat expectations too. And in fact, uh, the company said that its cannabis sales tripled during the last quarter. So uh, the momentum seems to be strong there for Kronos Group. And what I was also monitoring this week, we didn't write about it over at Schaefer's Research, but I saw in the headlines was that Tilray uh, has gained approval to bring in CBD products to be tested in the U.S. to hopefully uh, expand uh, that market as well and get some new insights into the CBD market. So Tilray staying relevant as well. Of course, that is ticker T-L-R-Y. But everyone, I'm going to cut it right there for this week. If you are interested, we have a lot of articles up on the site right now about how to trade the sell-off, what uh, historical data says about such sell-offs and uh, what the time frame looks like for recoveries and so on. And we have similar data for the VIX as well to show what the recent sharp move higher from the VIX could mean for stocks. So plenty of data like that over at Schaefer's Research if you want to go check it out. Or like I said, check us out on social media. If you want to check me out, I am on Twitter at Selway151. But this time of year, uh, I tend to focus more on fantasy football because I'm a nerd than the stock market. So just a fair warning there. But otherwise, thank you again for listening. Subscribe, review wherever you are listening. I will be back next week for more updates on the market and much more. See you soon.